business you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Ford. Ford invites us tech geeks to join the conversation, submit ideas, and grab a tech geek badge at social.ford.com. Welcome to All About Android, episode 77, recording on Tuesday, September 18th. Your weekly source for all yes. the latest news, hardware, and Confirmed. apps for the Android faithful. 18th, right? I'm Eileen yeah, yes. Rivera. <laughs> I'm Jason L. I'm Ron Richards. All right, good. Welcome. We got the date. Yes, right. we got that right. So that's a good to, place to start. It's all downhill I from here. I never know what time. I don't know what time it is. I don't know what date it is ever. Yeah. I'm really sorry, everybody. It's okay. Tuesday, September. You nailed it. You Thank it. you very much. Uh, we have a guest in studio as well. That's well, right. Not in studio, sorry, on the show. What kind of in studio? Guy. As, as with, an avatar with, here, we have Russell Hawley, mobile editor for geek.com. It's awesome to have you on the show, Russell. Thank you for joining yeah, us. It's great to be here. Thanks, Gary, for having me on. Absolutely. With yeah. video quality like that, he's practically in the studio. Yeah. I know. I, we were talking about a pre show. I'm amazed that his video connection, Verizon Fios, you're a lucky man. So. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that right there, land. right there, it blipped for a second <laughs> if you missed it. So. We Wording jinxed you. As intended. <laughs> yes. That was great. Fantastic. Oh, <laughs> when it's important, it'll stream. Uh, okay, so this week we've got a lot of interesting stuff. I just yeah, wrote I, stuff. I, I know. Did you like that? I was That's like, good. Well, I mean, it's accurate. I'm, we do have things. Yeah. We have things and stuff to talk about that things is all and stuff. Android related. Things and stuff and apps and products and releases oh and God. lawsuits. And we should just patents. Why name them? Because why? we're going to name them during the show. Exactly. If we name them, yeah. then we show a favorite. So really, we True. love everything. So I've been showing, I've been, I, I've had some favorites and I did put that at the top every yeah. once in a while. Like, ooh, and we're going to talk about the Galaxy S3. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, blatant favorite. Anyway, we should just jump into Let's our news. do it. All right. Could get a little complicated, but I'll attempt to uh, do my best here. First, some background. Google's Open <laughs> Handset Alliance was created back in 2007 as basically a means of getting all the hardware partners working with Android to agree to kind of certain terms that will help uh, push the platform forward. Acer, the company Acer, joined the alliance in 2009. And not much has really happened with the alliance that we've heard of in, in you know, in you know, that's had a lot of press anyways in recent months. But flash forward to last week when Acer suddenly canceled a news conference that they were about to hold to announce their new Aliyun mobile OS. It's an operating system uh, partnered with Alibaba overseas. It's a cloud-based OS based on Android code. Um, and I, I think what we're kind of realizing here is it's it's hard to put our fingers on exactly how much of the code is Android or, you know, if it was just pulled from Android or whatever. But effectively, it's incompatible. In other words, it's a forked version. And, I mean, the Amazon Kindle is a forked version True. of Android. Um, I like how uh, I think Google was calling it incompatible. And that almost makes it sound broken. And maybe to a certain degree it is. But uh, So basically, uh, the hubbub surrounds the revelation that Google applied at least some pressure on Acer to discontinue their direction with the Aliyun OS announcement. Essentially, as Acer is a member of the Open Handset Alliance, producing a version of the, of the OS that is incompatible, as they say, goes against the terms. Therefore, if they plan on releasing this forked version of the OS, they would no longer be able to take part in the alliance which has gotten them so far so far this day you know like what is being in the alliance gotten them like what kind of what do they have to lose yeah aside from google support of course you know well but, yeah so yeah. being a member of the alliance does give you some perks right? <laughs> right it gives you from what i understand earlier access to some of the code it gives you um what else? I don't know, Russell. What what does it give you? <laughs> so there's there's 84 companies I think that make up yeah. the uh, the Open Handset Alliance, and they all pull together. Uh, these are you know OEMs and chip manufacturers and uh, carriers and stuff like that. And uh, one of the biggest reasons that they all come together is that they can uh, they can offer each other kind of discounts, as it were, um, to to create kind of a lower uh, you know bill for the products uh, for, for individual handsets. So the devices themselves are, are faster to market and they're less expensive to make. Mm -hmm. 
Interesting. They also have access to things, and this is kind of another kind of growing part of this story, access to things in the OHS um, or OHA, such as Google's apps. You know, their apps are not necessarily open source. They're closed source. That's why if you're in the root, you know, and ROM kind of uh, ecos- <laughs> ecosphere or whatever, you're used to flashing a ROM and then finding a Google Apps package to flash because Google doesn't necessarily allow ROM makers to distribute their ROM with the included apps. The apps aren't open source themselves, just the OS is. So um, Andy Rubin, actually, we might as well just go ahead and throw out the the graphic. Andy Rubin took to Google Plus to put a word out to Alibaba's uh, VP of International Corporate Affairs, as John Spellick, and Andy had this to say. Andy? There we go. (laughs) Alleyun uses the Android runtime framework and tools, and your app store contains Android apps, including pirated Google apps. He also said, if you want to benefit from the Android ecosystem, then make the choice to be compatible. But if you don't want to be compatible, then don't expect help from OHA members that are all working to support and build a unified Android ecosystem. Thank you, Andy. Thank you for coming on the show. We really appreciate you being here. Um, and you can, really busy. you can get back to he, your busy life. He's one of the. F- he's always consistent in how he looks. Yes, I know. Like, oh, yeah. hair, he's got everything. the very unique yeah. way of talking. Yeah, you know, he's his got chin. the great little yeah. backdrop yeah. and everything. Yeah. It's great. Um, so I mean, this. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he always has a blue backdrop following him. It's weird. <laughs> Uh, so this is, of course, brought the question. You know, brought back the question that seems to come up regularly around Android, which is. Uh, how open is Android? I, d- I don't know if I necessarily think that this puts yeah. that into doubt. Mm, there's but been I'm- so much ch- uh, chitter chatter on Twitter from Apple fanboys are like, oh, really open, huh? Yeah. huh, huh. I mean, I've just seen it um, yeah. the last like several days, which is, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. there's another war we'll talk about after this story, but sure. um, yeah. <clears throat> well, I mean, I think I think it's I mean it's the it's the sense of openness. It's the yeah. it's the idea that it's way more open than iOS. But there's still, and we talked about this before with a lot of the phones, there's still parameters and there's still clearly boundaries and, and so that Google can control, not, not con- I don't control in like, you know, you know, maniacal dictator mm-hmm. control, but have some, you know, ways to I- I- implement changes and control things. And when it gets forked, it's kind of like all bets are off. And so like, I don't think this is really, you know, it's not, I mean, the, the terms and conditions of the Open Handset Alliance are clear. If they're in violation, then this right. is what the what this is what happens for it, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's up to Acer to make the business decision: is this deal with Alibaba worth worth making this change? And apparently, you know? it isn't because they've postponed they their thing, and <laughs> you know, we'll we'll see what they decide to do going forward. Uh, Russell, what do you think about this? Do you think this kind of calls anything into question, or do you think this was justified on Google's part? So I feel like this is justified, but the interesting thing that I think here was that it wasn't justified from Google. Uh, this is an open handset alliance group. This is supposed to be a group of companies that are all working together to, you know, kind of further these common goals. But Google is the only one that put the foot down. We haven't heard anything from, um, you know, Qualcomm or, or Intel or any of these other companies that are clearly involved in this same group. Um, and and really, you know, as somebody in the chat pointed out, you know, they're, they're uh, higher. Um, also made in, in uh, I think it's pronounced Alien um, instead of Alien. Okay. Yeah, really I sure. wondered about that. Um, yeah. Um, they they also produce an alien device, but what sets Acer and and higher apart is that they is that Acer is also a part of uh, the the group that Google announced at I/O last year uh, as part of uh, the the team that's you know supposed to be trying to get updates for Android devices out faster. So they're they're part of a you know part of a deeper group who has access to Android code a little faster than than some of the other guys. Um, but but really you know at the end of the day. This, this should have been something that was handled as a group, not necessarily just as Google. And I think that that's what helped set such a negative image for this was that it wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't a group decision. This was this was Google kind of, you know, knocking these guys on the head and saying, you guys need to toe the line. And, and that set a, a pretty bad image, I think. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree with that. It really does seem like something that should have fallen into the hands of, of the, the alliance. And if the alliance isn't making a big deal about it, why is Google? Um, yeah, like, like how much? I, I guess, I guess the question, and maybe it's not much of a question, is how much of a hand does Google have in the alliance 
are they kind of putting it out there and letting allowing the alliance to kind of take take the reins? But they're but they're not really because they're kind of dictating the rules yeah. that surround the alliance. Mm. It's it's like, the alliance, man. This just sounds like the, so sci-fi. It's like the, to it's, me like, like, it's like the emperor, em, the emperor and the old <laughs> the old senate. He just was letting them, you know, kind of go through the motions. But, but really, really? He had all the thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, maybe. Yeah. So okay, back to Star Wars. I did that last week too, didn't I? <laughs> that's a, there's that's always okay. a Star Wars reference. Okay, there's, there's a hook in there drink if you hear a Star Wars reference yeah. on this show. But yeah, but it does seem it does seem very much like that, though, doesn't mm-hmm. it? Whereas, like, how much of this alliance is actually how much? It, and that's the thing. I don't. I I'm not as well read on the issue. And Russell Jason, you can correct me if I'm wrong. But like, is Google technically like being the importance that they are with Android? Or they is Andy the spokesperson for the alliance? Did all the alliance? Are they all agree? Or they Google just stepped up and made this statement? And and, the, and everyone's just staying silent, just letting it happen. You know that yeah. it could be. You know, we don't really know what you know emails are being flown about. I found it funny that that Andy's response was a, a G plus post. You know, like he could have just emailed to the, them. Yeah, he could yeah. just he could just right. email the dude at Alibaba. But no, I'm going to post it on Google Plus where everyone can see. I want, it. yeah, I want everybody yeah. to see how I'm responding on this one. And yeah, we know that how rarely he posts. It's too. like he yeah. put a dot in front of the name so everyone will see it on the Twitter uh-huh. stream. So, uh-huh. yeah, it's like, the big red arrow. Uh-huh. Yeah. Image or something. Yeah. yeah. This would be interesting to follow. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Not a whole lot more to say. Do you have anything else to add on this, Russell? I don't really think so. I, I don't know that anything else is going to come from this, but I think it, it really kind of uh, it causes you to, to take a look at the open handset alliance and see what's, you know, it makes you question what's going to happen next with these guys. I mean, the open handset alliance was originally come together to, to take a look at, at Android because Android was was, you know, the the project that was being worked on. Um, but it, if if Google steps up for things that are not derived from Android, it, it'll be interesting to see uh, how that plays a part later on. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, okay. fanboys. Let's move on to fanboys. Oh, Let's move on to, shoot, to last so. week there was a um, some kind of product announcement. Something, some, something I don't even know what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. So uh, in response to a uh, new phone that is going to be released this week, Samsung has decided to, um, in some people's, in some reporters' words, uh, present an inflammatory new ad. Um, their ad talks about it doesn't take a genius. <laughs> and I've seen these ads everywhere yep. on buses, on, I mean, just everywhere. Samsung is just out, uh, out in it. front uh, with some fighting words. And so essentially what they have is uh, an ad that says it doesn't take a genius. One side is an iPhone. One side is the Galaxy S3. Uh, and then they break down the specs for each of the phones. And uh, if you look at the Samsung ad, there's a whole, you know, array of of extra features on the phone um, that they are t- saying is probably more appealing to you. <clears throat> at least that's their spin. So... Um, they're saying that okay, hey, the next big thing is already here. So they're just they're just comparing screen sizes and resolution and and various things like um, full HD support of this or that and the weight and that kind of thing. So you can make up your mind what you think is more important to you. What are you laughing about, Ron? The last, the last one on the iPhone side. A totally different plug. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very true. Which is true. That, it yeah, is very so, true. Yeah. Uh, versus the standard micro USB plug. So there's just, I don't know how many there are on the iPhone side versus the Galaxy S3 side, but, you know, obviously they're going to dominate. twice as much on twice the Twice as S3 much. Side yeah. Than, yep. Well, in response, there was an angry Apple fanboy that uh, took a red pen or or, or decided to um, uh, re-comment yeah. On uh, some of the features on the Galaxy S3 side and add more features on the iPhone 5 side. So, you know, there's passionate people out there. Yeah, there is. And I think, you know, in some ways, hopefully it breeds, you know, the competition that we're looking for um, in in sort of the mobile world. Uh, and, you know, take a look for yourself, what you think. I posted this on G+, and a lot of people are either outraged or, like, thought it was hilarious. Yeah, it's kind of a polarizing... You know? What, um, I, what I love is that the topic. responses is the responses aren't done. Like I can understand like calling out a bully, but the responses are a little yeah. Essentially, the s- Apple fanboy snarky. who who uh, defaced the ad has called Samsung a bully. Yeah. So it says in high school, it doesn't take a genius to know who is just a bully. That's the it, he just he he mocked up uh, the ad itself. So I don't know. I mean, I think there's always going to be one camp versus another. Yeah. 
Um, this was Samsung's. Uh, they started the fight with the, <laughs> with this uh, with this ad that I see again everywhere. Um, but you know, you have a choice. I, I mean, I, personally, I, I I think that I like Samsung's aggressive approach. I tend to like a more aggressive, controversial approach. Mm. To things, um, I, you know, admittedly, I, it's clear what can, what side of the fence I'm on, mm-hmm. um, and I think in this Apple fanboy's response shows what side of the fence he's on, and mm-hmm. also shows the level of uh, maturity that iOS sheep fans have in terms of their <laughs> de- their their passionate defense of their platform. But I, I, I the competition is good. It, it, I it, think a lot know, of this yeah. is I just look at it as hilarious. Mm. And um, some there's some points that are right, some points that are wrong on both sides. F- you know? I'll, we'll say on the iPhone five, it wasn't, it didn't stop the world from turning with all of its great new innovations. It was just kind of, uh, it's another phone, it's bigger. You know, like there was nothing where it's like, oh my god, it changed the world and the hype and everybody running to purchase it and stuff like that. It just kind of illustrates that, it, you know, like illustrates the uh, the iOS fanboy kind of reaction. Or at least we stop and we read specs. This kind of stuff exhausts me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this this kind of stuff. Like I I see this, you know, and I saw it all over the weekend. Of course, Samsung is going to come out with an ad that says that their device is better. That they're marketing their device, so that's important to them. And Apple would do the same thing in different ways. They had genius ads that slammed the PC mm-hmm. over the Mac. Yeah. So, I mean, the, both sides are going to do this. What's so exhausting to me is the fanboyism that surrounds this kind of stuff. I, I understand being passionate about a platform, and I am admittedly very passionate about an Android. I love Android. I also see, you know, I also see definite benefits and advantages to the other side the you know I, ios or whatever the other platforms are but this kind of stuff man it's it, sometimes I, I see these wars these battles these fanboy battles that go back and forth and the kind of the hatred and vitriol on both sides when all you're talking about is a phone and it just Dude. it exhausts me Dude. it almost at certain times i'm like god i don't want to do it anymore because i don't want to be a part of that right. Dude, you know you what think, i mean i know oh, i can relate i run a site called ifanboy <laughs> yeah and, well, and while it may enough. not be phones i sit there and we read everyone arguing marvel comics versus dc comics when it's to, if they're not even real at least the phone yeah. you can use to call somebody yeah. like it, for as long as i can, as long as i can remember in everything we've done there's been this decisive bipartisan event whether you know like Mm -hmm. growing up in new york mets or yankees you Mm -hmm. know comics marvel or dc phones android or ios east coast west coast east coast west coast oakland san francisco Mm -hmm. i mean like it's for some reason it's our human nature to do this oh it absolutely want this kind of republican democrat like and and i'm with you like i don't want to i don't want to have any part of it except that my phone's better so (laughs) Uh, (laughs) (laughs) and there you go uh russell what do you think about all this stuff were you following this at all I, I was definitely following it, and I, hard I saw to, the hard response to not. when it came up. And and it's interesting because you know the, it's. I think that this is kind of a, a, a build up from a lot of the stuff that's been happening. You know, uh, kind of against Apple um, across the world. Really, there were those stores the in litigation. Australia. Oh you know, um, yeah, 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 yeah. They had the people come out with the big black signs that said "Wake up" on them, and they mm-hmm. started. You know, they were picketing all the stores. And for a long time, uh, people thought it was Samsung until Samsung finally came out and said no. Uh, and and you know it just uh, it finally came it was out that rim. It was rim yeah, yeah that, that did it, of all companies <laughs> <I know>. um, <laughs> but uh, yeah it, it's just this this vitriol has been has been just kind of building up back and forth and and it kind of makes me concerned for what's going to happen next um, it, what you know what what could what could be more extreme than the things that we're seeing here um, and and that's that's kind of where I think you know I I, I kind of wish we could separate and take a break a little bit. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Everyone just yeah. needs a timeout. Yeah. But I mean, but ultimately it boils down to, especially on the fan side of things. Now, I can't, Middle East Samsung is poking the bear a little with these ads and those TV sure. commercials they ran and stuff like that. But, um, but ultimately it comes down to everybody, especially in nerd geek fandom. Everyone just wants validation. They want mm-hmm. they they want to be told that the thing that they like is the thing that everyone else likes, and and eat. they take sides. Yeah, they take exactly, sides like yeah. a team, so, yep. you know. So. And so it's kind of, yeah. And, and the the unfortunate thing is, it's really a chicken and egg scenario. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. no, you can you know when when you've got this kind of. Uh, War being waged on both sides so yeah. silly that it's well, the, a war about OSs. But when you've got that, like it's impossible for one side to back down because the other side, you know, it's it's like they're furthering each other's demise in that regard. Exactly. You know? and, and the thing and the thing is, is that like it's very much like my personal stance on politics and religion is that I don't like to talk about it because it's never a free form intellectual discussion mm-hmm. about why one thing is one way and the other thing's the other way. It 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 ends up being one person trying to convince the other person sure. and trying to change their mind. Oh, yeah. And you're and you're never going to change my mind. So, so well, and you want to talk about two companies that have no business fighting back and forth with each other when they're they are not just 
you know, this kind of strange gridlocked mortal enemy that we see them as, they're also each other's customers. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. 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 It's even yeah. weirder. Yeah, so has there ever sure. been a fight that's broken out in between both teams? <laughs> like, because that's when it gets really in crazy. An Apple like, you know, line, like when there was a the Giants boy. Dodgers fight that poor guy, you know, that oh, there's there's God. things like that that get really violent. Luckily, there hasn't we haven't been, seen right? That. Luckily, there hasn't been phone related so, violence so that just, I know of. It's a fighting yeah. fighting of words is fine because yeah. then you defend, you know, the OS that you like the most or yeah. whatever. But there hasn't been like fisticuffs, right? Nothing. No, I mean, not I got that it. I've heard of, but I know. Please, that that's where it goes too far. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's let's move on for something. <laughs> let's <laughs> do. Yeah. Fight. Um, is that it on the Samsung side? Oh of yeah, things? we're I done. So. Oh yeah. yeah, 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 we're done. We're done. All right, cool. I think we're done. So <laughs> we're done enough. Yeah, we're, we're done, done enough. enough. <laughs> All right, we've done enough. So, but we do have a. Um, is this a voicemail from uh, somebody about old devices and new ROMs? It is oh, Jerry yes. Davis. Let's hear what Jerry's got to say. Hey, 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 team. This is Jerry Davis, long time watcher, first time caller in. Um, I'd like to make a comment on the ICS ROMs for the older generation phones. Um, you said that it would be a terrible experience on the older phones. I just have to say I've got an OG Evo running CM10 and it's a better experience than my Samsung Transform Ultra running CM10. Thanks for... Let Sam. me call in, guys. But. Transform Ultra. You're, you're welcome. I've never we heard of that. You, Thank you, you. We let you call, Jerry. Yeah, no. oh. well, no, Thank but you the for Evo, calling. The Evo was a good handset. I mean, the Evo was, the Evo was a decent one. I mean, I, I, I wonder whether he could install that on an old G1. I mean, I think that's more what we were talking about. And the Samsung Transform Ultra is a $159 phone, no contract. Uh, I don't know if that means... Well, that must mean that it, that's its price and it's unsubsidized. So that, I mean, would be a low definitely a low-end phone from what i can tell but yeah and cm10 is not ice cream sanders that's actually jelly bean so you know that's yeah. even yeah, further, even further. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great that it runs on it so um cool. yeah. but yeah I'm, I'm really curious though just because i i started my my android conquest on on the motorola droid i'd be really curious to see what a motorola droid running jelly bean would actually uh perform like i have to imagine not very well because i was i pushed that to the limit and i think i got it up to uh, I mean, well, it would have been jelly bean. Or, sorry, it I would have been dust, gingerbread. I should dust off my G1. I wonder where it is. We should do see, it. see what we could do. Do with it. it. Bring yeah, it in totally. and do yeah. it. Yeah, I'm yeah, very yeah. curious yeah. about that. Uh, just out of curiosity, Russell, what phone do you use? Oh, um, so I have a Galaxy Nexus as my daily driver, but right now I'm actually using the uh, the Razer M. Oh. oh. Okay, what are you thinking about that? How, how do you like that? I'm pleasantly surprised by the direction Motorola is taking in in kind of staying out of uh, Google's way with stock Android, but still, you know, kind of sneaking in their own improvements. It, it doesn't feel uh, like a complete overhaul like we see with HTC and Samsung. Mm -hmm. the, these guys, you know, when you pick up the phone, it really kind of feels like a stock experience, uh, and and then you know you kind of get optimizations as you as you go through. But things like Folders work exactly the same. The launcher works exactly the same. The the drop, you know, the the drawer, um, you know, the the whole experience feels just ever so slightly out of phase with stock Android, and and that made me really happy because I've been a, a Nexus user for a while. Mm -hmm. Has the has the edge to edge screen kind of won you over at all? Like, is that a a big deal? I, I like that it, you know, the the whole phone kind of feels like it fits in my hand, and that there's not a lot of uh, there's not a lot of bezel. The phone feels nice and thin when compared to my Galaxy Nexus. My Galaxy Nexus, you know, didn't always fit uh, in just one hand, uh, mm -hmm. and so not having that bezel really makes the phone feel a lot smaller than it is. And it's it's been a, a nice change of pace. Is the M a four three? How big is the M? Yes, it's a four three. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the sweet spot, I think. <laughs> four not three, yeah. Four three to me, yeah. yeah. That's the galaxy. What the yeah. Galaxy S two is. Yeah, I was just comparing the the feel of my Galaxy Nexus to the S three, or is it S two? No, this S3. is the S three. Yeah, yeah, it's a little fatter. Yeah. It's four eight, and yeah. then yours is four but seven I have big four paws, six. So, yeah. <laughs> you do have big paws. I do. It's, uh, but um. <laughs> Yeah, four, th four three is interesting. I mean, I don't know. I thought I, I thought I would have a hard time with this, and it was funny because um, I dug up my Galaxy S, my mm -hmm. Nexus S, mm -hmm. to pull some data off of it, and I was like, "Oh, this is tiny," and that's mm -hmm. and that's four three, yeah. right? Yeah, or what was that four? Or I don't remember. I think it's it was, not uh, four 
four point three, I think. Yeah, it felt like a toy. It felt like I mean, admittedly the plastic. I mean, I forgot that this was my everyday phone, but I'm like, oh, this is tiny. Like I didn't realize how much I've gotten accustomed to the four six. Uh, a four, four inch, inch, yeah. Yeah, so. that's what it is. Um, one quick question before I move on as far as the Motorola M and the skin. Does Motorola still do that thing where when you want to drag an app from the drawer onto the screen, you have to drag it over and then place it and then click it again and move it? Or can you just do it? No, no, it down? feels very much like it works exactly the same okay, way good. as it does in, in normal Jelly Bean. <laughs> that always bugged me uh, about the Moto skin. It's interesting because that used to be the, the skin that I hated the most. And now oh, it, it right seems like they've kind you. of peeled yeah. it back. Yeah, I mean, I was exactly the same way. Of the three skins, that was my least favorite. But now, it, it feels the closest to stock, and there's not there's not a lot of just extra stuff. The Galaxy S3 is a really nice phone, but it, it really just doesn't even feel like Android sometimes. There's so sure. much other stuff on top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agreed. All right, well, let's uh, take a quick break and uh, pay some bills. We'll thank our sponsor, Ford. Uh, Leo and Ayaz actually uh, spoke with one of Ford's leading technologists, Jim Bukowski, about his views on the future of technologies in vehicles. And uh, some of the things that they discussed were kind of cool. Uh, new categories of apps coming to the sync platform, location-based services, finding friends, financial service apps, um, also lane departure warning, lane centering features using onboard cameras, using the cloud to do things like seamlessly connect information and services used in the home uh, vehicle as well as the office. And Ford Social is one of the ways to develop and surface those ideas to the engineering team actually at Ford. It's a place where people like you can go to post ideas that you have to Ford directly. The URL is social.ford.com and there's just a ton of ideas that you can find on there. Um, you know, the Ford Ranger was my favorite truck for the last 15 years. Uh, the F... 10, F-150 is too large for my lifestyle and also my garage, the Ranger. You know, a lot of people are kind of reviewing uh, the vehicles as well as kind of giving ideas like solar panel, um, a solar panel on the roof, sunroof to charge the batteries on cars that run on batteries. That would be pretty darn sweet. Um, you can just read through a lot of these different ideas that people are submitting. And if you have ideas for ways that Ford can improve uh, their vehicle technology, you can submit those ideas as well. There's also, uh, they have a bunch of articles on there interviewing different people. You might recognize one person. His name is Leo... <laughs> Laporte? Le Laporte. That yes. Guy? Yes, he was interviewed for the site, so you can uh, oh, kind of wow. read. There, there is. he is. Uh, known as tech pundit Leo Laporte, sharing his insights on Sync. So you can find a lot of different people kind of giving their insight on the Sync experience and just different ways that Ford is working to improve the technology inside your vehicle and kind of pushing that effort forward. So uh, why don't you check out social.ford.com. You can read more about all the stuff I've talked about. Submit your own ideas to Ford. And you can even like your favorite ideas. And if you're a badge-aholic... Uh, you can go there and you can get a Tech Geek badge uh, while you're there, as, as well as a bunch of other badges that you can do uh, as you're kind of participating more. Oh, people love um, the badges. Yes, like they the do. Gamification. That's right. That's all at social.ford.com. Uh, that's all you need to know. Go there, social.ford.com. And we thank Ford so much for their support of All About Android and the Twit Network. You guys are awesome. Thank you. All right, let's jump into hardware. All right, just, Speaking of Motorola, I, I want a video of you jumping into a pool of hardware, just like yeah, just, just like like, yeah, like Uncle boy, Scrooge in the money bin, boy, but like but it's boy. all phones. <laughs> okay, I'll work on that. Sorry, all right, Motorola. Uh, I need access to a pool yeah. and a camera crew. We can make that happen. Okay, all right, all right. I have a pool. Piece of cake. Can can we, excellent. Can and we you drain have a camera. It? Can we drain it and fill it with with phones in the winter? <laughs> <laughs> this will be interesting. Um, Yes, uh, I'm, I'm down, by the way. Right, uh, so cool. let's go back to Motorola. We were talking a little bit before the br the ad break about Motorola. Motorola also had some news uh, this week. So last week, you know, they announced all the razors and everything. I think that was last week, right? Yeah, yeah. Am I getting my weeks confused? Uh, a couple weeks ago, I think. Okay, yeah, yeah they matter. all seem the to run HD together razor, at this point. <laughs> yes. And the HD Razor Max. Yes, and the, the Razor M. M, as we were talking. Which we were talking about. Uh, well, they, yes, uh, yesterday. Yeah, today. Uh, today, see, I'm or, telling you. Or this was in London, so. Right. It Yesterday. was this morning when I woke Today up, the news us. was hitting. For them. Officially unveiled their first Android device powered by Intel. Motorola is kind of Intel's biggest partner in mm -hmm. smartphones right now. 
and Intel is trying to kind of make a splash in Android. The Razer I, as they call it, lowercase i, good thing they didn't put that i on the other side of the word Razer, <laughs> has the same body as the Razer M. It's a 4.3-inch screen and all that, uh, and more or less the same specs as well, except, of course, the important part, uh, for the Intel 2 gigahertz Medfield single-core chip. Now, they, uh, they tout the hyper-threading that they say actually makes up for the lack of multi-core processing. Uh, there is no Chrome browser included, and it's, it's later in the day kind of come out that you can't even install, or you, no, actually you can install Chrome on there, but it doesn't run. Um, and Google has confirmed that they are working to tweak Chrome so that it'll work on the Intel chip. I think that's a compatibility issue. Android, Android Central was able to uh, glean that earlier today. Um, and Gadget put the phone through a number of benchmarking tests, and though the Medfield chip is actually fully compa uh, fully capable and actually bests the Razer M in browser performance, it lags in nearly every other way as compared to the M's dual-core Snapdragon uh, S4 1.5 gigahertz processor. But overall, it sounds like it performed reasonably well. Um, what else about this phone? The camera uh, was a big talking point. They said the Razer Eye has a startup time for the camera app of one second. So if launching that camera app is really important to you. Well, we've nice. we've uh, been really critical of Motorola phone cameras mm -hmm. for a while. So Yeah, yeah, performance on their cameras, absolutely. Yeah. And also 10 frames per second of shooting capability. Okay. Wow. Which, that's a lot of frames. Not that you're going to be, you know necessarily always capturing sports and everything but it's nice it that gives you an indication of the speed of uh, operation and it also includes a hardware shutter button something that i got very used oh, to on yeah. my old motorola droid that. and you don't yeah. see those anymore you don't uh so this phone is available in october uh in the uk france germany brazil argentina and mexico no word as far as i know on u.s release if at all but uh i don't know what do you think like because we have the what's, M. What's the big deal with Intel on Android? Why all the hubbub? It's new. It's x86. There you go. Yeah. Okay. It, right. It's, it's taking go. Android to the x86 system, which, which you know, opens up a lot of doors to a lot of other things. And, and you know, kind of an interesting, uh, you know, kind of playback on what you were saying earlier, the uh, the benchmarks. Um, I don't think any of those benchmarks, Antutu or, or any of those, are optimized for x86. So mm. I'm not really sure that any of those benchmarks have any kind of relevance because they're set up for you know the, the processors that we're used to seeing uh, in Android devices and not for you know the, the typical x86 uh, architecture that we see with you know computers. Okay, interesting. So it's almost like using a, the wrong tool to rate performance. Yeah. Um, of course, it's going to perform better on something that's fully compatible with it. Um, yeah, it's it's an interesting thing to think about. Uh, you know, using this different chip. I guess it's very similar. And correct me if I'm wrong. To the use of the Tegra three, where in the early portion, you know, earlier times when Tegra was just starting to kind of hit the phones, there were certain apps that only run Tegra, and maybe even still, there are certain apps that only run on Tegra. So it's kind of the same thing. It kind of breaks it up a little bit, though. How, how as a user, does how, how do you navigate that as a user? You know I, I, I mean? mean, for the, the layman, I don't think you can. I mean, you can. I mean, it, it, and that, that's what Hopefully the Play Store siphons it out for yeah, you. No, hopefully, yeah, no, hopefully, yeah, what happens it is that it's not compatible with your device yeah. or whatever, but like that, but but for I, I can't imagine being the average person and I get my phone and I hear about this app that my friend has and I get to it, it's like, oh, it's because this app isn't compatible with your processor. And it's like, well, what I don't even know what Tegra means. What is that? You know, so mm -hmm. like the the processor fragmentation is really the most worrisome of all the fragmentations, I think, because the the, the average user really has little to no not it's not everyday knowledge. That well, and these are problems that Windows had back in yeah. you know, Windows ninety five. I mean, where you know, where Nvidia, the, the it's 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 kind of like the same thing all over again. Nvidia, you know, they would they would release all these commercials and say these games only work if you've got the Nvidia you know chipset with your uh, with your game platform. Mm -hmm. um, and it took it took Windows a long time to get over that. Um, but uh, but I, I think that you know that there needs to be some really quick resolution for that very same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, even even Mac OS X had the problem when they switched over to the Intel processors. Like just the other day, I was looking right. for some app, and it's and it didn't run on an Intel processor because it was an old, mm -hmm. unupdated. You know, but I was like, oh crap, I need this. You know, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep, it's unfortunate. <laughs> Um, well, speaking of Motorola still, um, Russell, you wrote an article about Motorola's awesome developer edition devices, right? Oh. What's, the, what's the deal here? 
So I mean, you know, it's it's every every nerd's you know dream to be able to take your phone and crack it open and yeah. uh, you know flash bootloader, have some fun with it, put a ROM on there. Uh, and and there's a there's a, a disconnect, you know. Obviously, these guys, you know, they run into issues with carriers, and and so you know, a lot of these companies are trying to find ways around it. HTC has had their unlock system for a while now, and mm-hmm. with the uh, with the Razer devices, Motorola announced the developer edition for each one of the devices that they announced. So the Razer M, the the Max HD, and the uh, and the Razer HD are all getting developer editions uh, that are going to come out later on. And then the price sounded about right. You know, it's it's five forty nine for the Razer M, which is about what you would pay for it if you were to buy it outright from from Verizon. But uh, if you go to if you go to unlock the bootloader on this developer edition of the phone, you still lose your warranty. And huh. it, it says really huh. clearly in Motorola's text that even if something happens that's not related to unlocking the bootloader, they're still not going to cover it. Which is just this weird kind of backstab. Why is so it then a what's developer? the point? What's the yeah. point exactly. having a developer edition? I don't understand. That's <laughs> just confused. that's just backwards. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah, and I mean HTC, they they've. You know they they made a commitment to uh, opening up their bootloaders and giving giving tools for those things and more or less they've kind of stuck to that commitment without requiring you to necessarily in all cases anyways maybe they have a, a developer edition phone that I that I can't remember right now um, but I mean for the most part if you have an HTC phone that's relatively recent you're probably going to end up with the ability to be able to open open it up through their tool right. um this man if the, if this cancels a warranty it's like why why even do it then what's exactly the point? yeah it, it doesn't it, and i've yet to be able to get an answer from motorola about what makes this a developer edition if it works the exact same way as every other phone they sell um but it, it's just you know it's weird first of all that you have to use a tool to unlock the bootloader if it's a mm-hmm. developer edition you know we, we've got tools like fast boot you know, for for the Nexus systems, we should be able to use really similar tools. If you're going to sell something branded as a developer edition, it, it just kind of feels like they had a really good idea, and then their legal team kind of said, "Well, we're going to do it another way." <laughs> not surprising with these corporate cultures, especially yeah, when it's something like Motorola. Not... It's been around for a long time. I mean, it, they, this could be a legacy decision that you know, I'm sure there's somebody at Motorola banging their fist on the table saying, "No, we shouldn't do this," but mm-hmm. there's probably somebody above them yeah. saying no. So. would hope somebody there is saying yeah. we shouldn't do this because it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. All right. So um, apparently I'm on the LG beat. So uh, I've, I pull these stories and I put RR on, on, the, <laughs> on the LG beat. So if you are at home waiting for the latest from LG, we've been talking a lot about their uh, the, the, the Optimus Vu and the odd shape phone and the, the, the phablet. <laughs> but um, and whether or not people use them. Right. Exactly. But recently um, we got uh, finally got a, a, a look at their new flagship phone. There was a event in uh, Korea, I believe, uh, Seoul, Korea, where people got their hands on the uh, LG Optimus G. Um, and so first time we got to actually see it and hold it and both The Verge and, and Gadget had some great photos of hands-on with it. This is uh, – so it's running Android 4.0. It's got a quad-core Snapdragon uh, S4 Pro processor, 4.7-inch for Eileen because she likes the big phones, um, running at a 1280 by 768 resolution. It's got an IPS display, which is very – it was thought to be very similar to the um, screens that are in the iPhone, but it's actually not exactly the same, slightly different. But, um, but it's supposed to be a super interesting, super really nice uh, – uh, look and display. Um, LTE, 32 gig of storage, 2 gig of RAM, NFC, uh, 13 megapixel camera, 13 and a big old fat battery on there. So it um, looks like LG's is stepping up to the plate. They got a phone. So if you're in Korea. It's not a bad looking phone yeah. either. Non removable. Yeah, it's got a nice, battery. kind of minimal yeah, quality so, to it. Yeah. You know what's funny is that I'm adamant about having phones with removable batteries. How many? Ask me how many times I've changed my battery. <laughs> Zero. But knowing that you can. Yeah, I just I never yeah, remember. But to if order you one. never do, then yeah, I never remember to order one. Anyway, well, I. But yeah. it's, this is nice. It's thin. This is yeah. uh, you might want to. You may not ever remove your replace your battery, but how often do you need? Do you feel the need pull to pull it. it for something? Actually, surprisingly, I haven't done that in like a year. Like it's ever since the Galaxy Nexus, I haven't done that once. Hmm. So. Because, and, and I'm glad because it's a pain in the butt to get this back thing off and back on. Like the, mm-hmm. yeah, but um, the yeah, I've got, because I have a replacement right. battery, I've gotten very, very good at oh, taking yeah, that no, thing I'm off and putting yeah. it back yeah. on. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, but so there's the there's your latest from LG. So you LG fanboys, 
I'm here for you. All right, you've got the rest of the LG stories ever. Okay, Ron, I is do. that apparently, cool? Okay. Apparently, I love LG. All right, maybe they'll send me a phone. Send me an Optimus. Well, I'm the one that dissed it, so I can't. I know. Yeah, you're, I'm you're, Samsung. you're journalistically ethic- you ethically can uh, can't cover it no. because you're biased. I am biased. So I am never neutral. mind. Uh, but in my bias, I will t- still talk about HTC. Now there is. Um, uh, there's been many trends of, you know, sort of trading your phone um, and getting money back to get a specific hardware manufacturer phone. Well, uh, HTC also has uh, um, a website that you could possibly do that called HTCTradeUp.com. Uh, and, you know, you can go to Gazelle, you can go to uh, various places and trade in your old hardware. But you could also, you know, get money back from HTC and, uh, you know, put uh, put it towards a new HTC phone. I um, have an old, uh, I was just doing a lot of different uh, experiments here. An iPhone 4S 32 gig uh, could trade you up to $230. AT&T not version, not yeah, so bad. This, this is a little different than the Motorola one. The Motorola one is pre-purchase. So basically they say, right. trade us your phone before the purchase. We'll give you a $100 discount off of your new Motorola device. And apparently up this to $300 is, the is, is is the trade. So what, what are you looking for? I'm Galaxy doing Nexus Samsung Verizon. Galaxy Nexus on Verizon, fully functional, no liquid damage, no <laughs> screen breakage, damaging or leakage. Uh, submit. One hundred seventy dollars for my Verizon Galaxy Nexus, which has a decent amount of scratches on it. Okay. Which I don't, I don't know how they would factor yeah. that, but I'm sure they'd probably honor that. And this would be after the fact. So you've bought a new HTC phone, then you'd get this when you trade in your phone. Yeah. Well, why? Are, what are they doing with the phones? <laughs> Well, that's a good question. Right? Like, what is it? Like, Gazelle? They, yeah. <laughs> I have no I, yeah, idea. Like what, like, what is, like, are they scrapping them for parts? Are they? <laughs> There's got to be what some is, sort is of. It, are they, are they literally buying, buying your, your, you as a user for $170? Yeah, that's kind of what it seems like. So I mean, it's the like. same kind of thing that, that Motorola is trying to do, yeah. you know, on their side, too. They want to keep you, they want to give you enough incentive that you'll stick with them. Can we ask our friend at HEC what they're doing with the phones? <laughs> He's not there anymore. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a gone. Samsung. He's now. a Samsung now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, maybe, maybe <laughs> yeah, Michael Ludden. Yeah, yeah. Yes, he's with Samsung. I can't keep track. Everyone's moving. I know. Moving around. <laughs> yeah, Can happens. we ask our friend at Samsung what's the deal with the ads? <laughs> yeah, actually, maybe I mean, we, we should. Him, I bet we we'd get him. a very, yeah. we'd get a very solid non-answer out of him. Oh yeah, <laughs> if anything, not, yeah. I would. Uh, that would be I my guess. I grilled him anyway. last time he was on the show about a bunch yeah. of Samsung stuff, and he because was it was right quiet. around the Samsung Apple yeah. patent yeah. Yeah. Uh, trial stuff. And well, he was I didn't very... grill him about that. I grilled him about other things like their stupid Samsung Beam phone. Oh, okay. But anyway, yeah. uh, right. moving on. All right. Email. Oh, that's me. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, okay, so. Prathamesh, first name, sorry. Okay. I'm sorry in advance. Hey, I just got a new company domain and email address powered with Gmail, but I can't find a way to transfer my app to my new Gmail ID. Please tell me how to transfer all my paid apps. I know you can't do this with the Apple App Store. Is there any way to do it in Google Play? I'm sorry to tell you that at this point in time, there is not an easy, well, there isn't a way that I know of actually at all, not easy or difficult to move your apps from one account to another. I just don't think it's possible. I mean, I, you, there is kind of a way. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. There we go. I love this. All right. Is it, Russell? What's up? It's it's not easy. You have to reach out to each developer individually and explain your situation and hope that they care. Oh, oh so there's not a way, man. basically. Uh, I mean, <laughs> well, you, I, I ran into this problem uh, when I first had my Nexus One, where I switched domain names and realized that oh, I had spent $300 in apps over the last two years and, and just really had lost everything when I moved email addresses. So, so uh, I, I, you know, the the guys from Google, the only suggestion that they had was that I reach out to each developer individually and ask them very, very nicely uh, to uh, to give me uh, basically a free app on this other account. Oh, um, and it was okay. it was pretty bad. <laughs> it, it took me uh, it took me about a month and a half, and I think I still lost about half of the apps. Wow, yeah, that's a lot of work to to go through. Um, potentially, if you buy a lot of apps, it's definitely a lot of work. Um, mm-hmm. You know, if you don't, if you haven't purchased a lot of apps, then it might not be that big a deal. Well, if you purchase them, I can see why. And then then you just, yeah. but then you just have multiple that you have the both accounts on the phone. Yeah, you know, to just keep the old account and download all the apps and then get rid of the account. Or yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I was thinking yeah. on on this is you don't really need to transfer it potentially yeah. unless you have to give up that account for some reason mm-hmm. and uh, you can never access it again. You can add multiple 
Gmail accounts to to it and sync up all of those ads or the apps associated with those. And accounts. this is a lesson why you should never pair your phone or something with a work address with a work email address. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've not worked there forever. Well, and that. and before the Play app was the Play Store and it was the Android market, there was this long period of time where it was really difficult to know which account you were purchasing uh, apps yeah. under. Yep. You had to specifically like yeah. think about it and select it to make sure. And and through that, I ended up in the same boat. I ended up buying a few apps on my Twit account yeah. uh, as opposed to my personal one and mm-hmm. whatever. It wasn't it that It kind of makes deal. me wonder as we do a lot of this stuff, what's going to happen when – because, uh, I mean, we got parents who are giving, you know, the tablets and stuff for, for kids to use and they're creating accounts for kids to use. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, teenagers don't always make the best decision when it comes to creating uh, usernames. <laughs> what, happens, what happens when you've got a bunch of apps, but then you go to your first job and, and your email address is, you know, I, <laughs> I, I you know, something I horrible. Such, oh, no. Such, <laughs> such, <laughs> some terribly offensive name at Gmail. <laughs> it's not it's not yeah, even change teen- it. it's, it's not even teenagers. It's dumb, witty, 20 something. Things who make a Gmail account na- uh, they're ca- named after a character from a bad 80s movie, and now I'm stuck with it. And so whenever like I go to a new job, and they're like, oh, what's your IM name? I'm like, I, I'm like here, I'll email it to you. Like, I don't want to talk about it. But yeah, so. And the thing is, I've thought about moving to like a, yeah. you know, a Ron a XO or, yeah. or, or, a, or my name or something like that, but it's too much work, so it's fine. Yeah, so I just I stick with it. So. You do? Yeah, I do stick with it, yeah. Wow. Ducky from yeah, Pretty exactly. in Pink. Yeah, yeah, that's is that, is that the name you're talking yeah. about? Ducky? Okay. Ducky Ford. Four, four, I don't know why I know that. No, yes. No. All right. All right, cool. Let's move into apps. Google did a little bit of purchasing. They did. Over the they last couple up their, days. Their purse did a little shopping yeah. uh, for Nick Software and the, uh, the crown jewel in their... Um, sort of arsenal of apps is Snapseed. And um, yeah, I know there's a lot of you out there who could care less about filters, but honestly, Snapseed is one of the best iOS yeah. uh, uh, apps uh, to do uh, filtering. And I've been waiting just for it. photo editing in general. Photo editing right? in general is great. There's cropping, there's tilt shift, there's everything in there. It's just really great. The tools are really awesome. And um, I had heard a long time ago that they were going to bring it to Android and they hadn't yet. So maybe... Although- It'll finally happen, um, but they're going to use it on G+, probably. Of course. Um, So, um, yeah, there's a lot of questioning about what's going to happen now to the app over there on the iOS world, and I don't really know. Uh, I just know that this, to me, uh, seems like a good thing, but... um, I think it's great for the Google ecosystem, and I I wonder how much of this was triggered by the purchase of Instagram, like whether... Exactly. And the thing was... Facebook, yeah. Yeah, and if you go back and look at how Google works, I mean, I remember back in the day, this is, you know, five, six, seven years ago, but, like, we loved these great, this online Mm -hmm. word processor, Rightly, or whatever, and then Google bought Mm -hmm. it, and now we use Google Docs, and it's Mm -hmm. using the, the, the technology that they bought from that purchase... Um, we're seeing Google, Google Plus. Remember Google I.O. when mm-hmm. they announced their events thing and I leaned over to you, I go, they're aiming after Facebook. Mm-hmm. And now if Facebook is going to step up their photos with the, after the Instagram purchase, then Google's got to, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a keeping up with the Jones. Apparently you know? the company that is in San Diego is going to relocate to Mountain View and cool. work at Google headquarters. Cool. So uh, congrats to that company. It's mm. a great app. And yeah, I really not- hope we get it on Android soon because yeah. well. I want to do it on there. I've arena. never even really heard of it. They also do a lot What's of other iOS? things that aren't. You don't... Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> You've never heard of it before? <laughs> Man, I almost ejected um, out of my seat on that one. <laughs> well, if you don't have Jason the iOS... So <laughs> if you if you don't have an iOS device, then you won't have heard of it because yeah. it's not on Android. Well, and they, they do a lot of other filtering, uh, I think, plugins and stuff outside of this app. There's um, other apps, Which, yes, you know, Trey exactly. Ratcliffe, who does the, the photo stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. just a, a ton of photo stuff online and Google Plus and everything. He, you know, his perspective is that's the bigger the bigger mm-hmm. acquisition here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, it'll be interesting to see how Google kind of folds this into their own thing. So do you remember months ago we talked about a Kickstarter program called right. Chameleon? Yes. yes. We yes. talked about Did it you get po- that? Uh, well, first of all, Russell, do you remember this Chameleon thing? Oh, yeah. I've used Chameleon a couple of times. Were you in on the beta? Like, did you buy into the yeah. Kickstarter? Okay, so you've been using it for a while then. I have. Excellent. What do you think of it so far? I, I think that it's really early, and, and it's going to take a lot of developer support in order for it to not feel quite so early. Then I will not pay the ten dollars. Yeah, yeah. Do you think, yeah, do you think it's worth the ten dollars purchase? Well, I, and that's that's a really good question. I, th- this so 
I'll, I'll back up. Chameleon is finally uh, available for those that weren't on the Kickstarter. Uh, so the you launcher. can get it at the Play Store for $10. The launcher for $10.26. Um, you can go there and check it out. I did download it and, uh, you know, just right before the show. So I've hardly oh, had, looks, it looks that gorgeous. Looks hardly had any chance to set up. I set up my home my home profile. And then, of course, you know, I think over here is the work profile. And I haven't added anything to it yet. But, yeah, um, I don't know. Great. Like, totally, only really spent like maybe 10 or 15 minutes with it. It does seem like, man, once they get a ton of widgets in there, uh, you know, maybe it'll be a little bit more enjoyable. $10 really seems like a lot for this. Well, and you lose. Yes. W what you gain is some really cool stuff. It it's all HTML5. So, you know, people who want to come in and add stuff from existing applications, it's supposed to be really simple to do so. But you lose every widget that Android makes, that the Android has available. And you can't use any of them. So oh. you can use those or whatever right. developers create specifically mm -hmm. for oh. Chameleon. Yeah. Uh, yeah, which I mean, you know, they're they're kind of nifty. Like when you when you pull them down, like if I did Instagram, you know, you can resize it and make it whatever size you want, it's and cool. then you know, sync it's almost it like to your widgets account. reimagined. Um, yeah, well, you know, it's it's almost just kind of like another launcher, really. You know what I mean? Like a lot of launchers allow you to do different things. I think Launcher Pro, if I remember in my gingerbread days, Launcher Pro is the one that I'd use, and they had specific widgets that you could only use inside Launcher Pro. So, I mean, it's kind of like that. The, the benefit with Launcher Pro or something along those lines that you don't get here is, like you said, Russell, you can't use any of the widgets yeah, or anything right. else, you know, that you have outside of Chameleon. I'll tell you. Chameleon also has some really cool kind of context-based things that they can do with their launcher. I mean, you, you mentioned that they have like a work mode and a play mode. Right. But they can also, you, you can also set entirely different home screens to uh, the time of day or... Um, you know, if, if uh, you're on GPS or you're on LTE, you can you can set a context. And, and so, like, if you're in the office, then you're using a different one. But it'll make those changes automatically. Hmm. Right. Yeah, right. Exactly. It senses but, where you are and launches. But, what, but again, yeah. I mean, and I get I get adding value, giving value to the Kickstarter backers. Um, but I'd be really curious to see what their pricing strategy was around this because if the idea was to make it $10 to, you know, make the Kickstarter people feel as if they got something special, that's a little lame. I think $10, $10 for a bunch of really cool widgets and a home screen is too much. I mean, if that was four ninety nine, I would consider it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, some of the more expensive, well, except for Shell, 3D, whatever the one that was, is $20, <laughs> you know um, are around four ninety nine. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. So there you go. Chameleon. We talked about it. We've updated on it. It'll Thanks be interesting to see. It, Jason. Well, you know, I, I felt like we had it on the show. So yeah. one of us has to get in and talk about it. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm happy I have it because I'll, I'll, I'll check in on it over yeah. time. It was kind of an, it, it was interesting to see it evolve from a Kickstarter project that everybody mm -hmm. freaked out about and yeah. uh, to see where it's going to head. Cool. So um, speaking of other anticipated applications on Android, it looks like some more. Um, Things that we've been waiting for are coming to fruition. Um, Carbon, which has been a hotly anticipated Twitter client. Um, I've been told this is the holy yes, grail. I've been this told. The holy grail. I've been told. No idea. Just wait first. for this. It's potentially days away, according to its <laughs> developers. Um, yeah. Apparently, there was a tweet from the Car Carbon for Android account that said, a matter of a few days with a Z and now. He yeah, it's still alive and kicking. Next up will be a full video in our Google Play link. So if you're waiting for the holy grail of Twitter apps, uh, Carbon, follow their Twitter account and you can see it. And who told me I should be waiting for this is Phil Nickinson, who's on that photo right there yeah. mm -hmm. from Android mm -hmm. Central. He said, because I've been complaining, you guys know I've been complaining about Twitter apps on Android. And he said, this is probably the one that you want. Yep. <laughs> and all right, well, I'm waiting. So, tick, tick, I, tick, but tick. I mean, okay, it might be, but will they be capped at the 100,000 limit that Twitter puts? I mean, they will. Yeah. Um, Has that started already? Uh, yeah, I believe yeah. that's started. That's in yeah. full effect. I mean, it's, if, it's a, if your client world. wasn't yeah. launched, yeah. you get a th 100000 unless you make a deal with them. So yeah. be interesting. it be interesting. Well, and, uh, it's weird how that's going to work maybe because yeah. Carbon's actually an extension of the original Carbon that was for WebOS. So depending on if they were able to keep their registration tag for Twitter, Carbon's been around for a really long time. Yeah. Mm, okay. That's a good point. Oh, so maybe point. they could so just simply in. increase on top yeah. of their already existing yeah. user base. So we'll see. So stay tuned to their Twitter account. Um, additionally, for you gamers, um, Rovio, who we all know from Angry Birds fame, has uh, started showing the first gameplay footage of their new game, Bad Piggies. Which it is kind of cool. Is, I yeah, say. which is picking up from the uh, from the Angry Birds verse. 
Um, we'll take a look at some of this footage here. Yeah, maybe skip forward about a third of the way through on that, Brian. Then you start so we've to get to the, the actual. got the piggies uh, acting out and uh, fighting back, huh? Is that the point of this? Yeah, so, so the point of it, from <laughs> what I can tell, you'll see it here in a few seconds, is you actually build your vehicle and then try and get it to maneuver through the scenario. Oh, they're not going after the birds. No. This is uh, just their own world. Yeah, so you so you actually construct your vehicle, right? That's cool. Oh. And then you use that vehicle to hopefully propel you through the land. That's very the cool. The layout of the land. Um, Rovio, it it almost looks a little too... Yeah, I, I, I think I would be very bad at this game. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'd be bad at it. Yeah. Ooh, oh, okay, and then you fly, and then you... Okay. Yeah, but it all looks right. cool. Like, it doesn't look at all like uh, Angry Birds. Angry Birds. Yeah, yeah, which is what they need to know with yeah. the I mean, But with the same kind of character, the same look and feel, the cartooning, yeah. and the, and the you know, familiar characters to keep the franchise alive, but they've got to innovate, and this looks like what they're doing, so... Yeah. Ooh, I'm so buying bad piggies. Yeah. Rock yeah. on. All right, Uh-oh, good. you're going to arena Ooh. it, aren't you? I, know. I, I never know. did. You know what? I never did Angry Bird Space. I feel yeah. like anything, but I feel like it's yeah, yeah it's, it's, Rovio, it's, it's yeah. obvious. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, and then the last app that I've greatly been anticipating, which I just discovered, is now available for Android. It's been available for iOS, but it's an app called Lyft, L Y F T, um, and it's uh, for those of you who heard me talk about using Uber, um, which is a cab replacement. Lyft is a uh, ride sh- on-demand ride sharing. Um, which is really, really cool. And um, it's, uh, I don't know what cities, other cities other than San Francisco it's present in, but if it's in your city, definitely check it out because it's cheaper and easier to use than a cab. So um, Lyft is awesome. So it's finally out for Android. I'm very excited. So Sweet. Cool. Lyft. Lyft. Oh, I know. Yeah. Just wanted to say that. Just wanted to mess with you. <laughs> I want to mess with you. Throw some salt in the wound yep. that didn't exist. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. You got the email. I do have the email. <laughs> so, oh, wow. So we got another email. This one comes in from Mark Lastwicka, who writes in and says, I was watching episode 76 of All About Android and noticed that you showcased the ultimate rotation control app in the arena. Ultimate. The ultimate rotation control app. Um, I also wanted to let you know that it's amazingly useful for Google TV. If you sideload apps onto the Google TV, songs of being a good example, they will try and go into portrait mode for some reason. This This gives you a pretty undesirable effect. The way to correct this is to use ultimate rotation control to force the Google TV to play all apps in landscape mode so you never run into that problem. Just want to give you a heads up. Hope that helped. Thank you, Mark. That's awesome. So if you are sideloading apps onto your Google TV and you want them, the reason why it's snapping into portrait mode is because you're using apps that really aren't designed for Google TV, for a TV uh, landscape thing that are designed for the phone. So that's why it's snapping into portrait. Um, So another reason why ultimate rotation control possibly might be the greatest app ever made. (laughs) <laughs> still it's still little, fighting for it, aren't you? It's a, it's a great app, but come on, Ron. Well, the greatest app ever made. We, we can answer that, There's, you know. We can, I know. Yeah, I, we're going to answer that. We're going to answer it, exactly. It, I like hyperbole. <laughs> this I know about you. Yeah. All right, in fact, it. let's answer it. Let's get into the arena. To enter, one lives the Android Arena have a comeback. I mean, how many times have you said the greatest app ever made? Maybe the Uniqlo app. Maybe whatever clock app you did or travel app that you've done before. Is Every just the current app one to is? run is the greatest app ever made. I, I, I like how you thought of a comeback two minutes later. I know. That was, that was so, it was so, it was great. So, so getting this one I'm in so there. not like, so I'm, I'm such a fighter. Oh, I thought of a, I thought of a comeback. I got, I got a comeback, everybody. And then I announced it like a weirdo. All Listen, right. <laughs> well, let's see. Is it the ultimate app I was, ever? I thought I had it. I thought I had it in the bag. Yeah, I kind of thought you did, too. Yeah. Uh, it turns out, look out, ad network detector. No, totally not. I totally completely lost. But Scope did win. Joe Braidwood's you app know, from last week, Scope, wins with 34% of the votes. He had it in the bag when he said yep. Android only. Mm. Also, yeah. I have to say, I used it, and it is pretty good. My only, my only, only, The only pain about it, I think, is just there's, there's a few... Um, uh, issues that I have with scope, which is just sort of like tap to jump, jump to the top is a pain. And if you haven't used yeah. it for a long time, but it's a really nice and elegantly made Android first, Android only mm-hmm. app, right? And we noticed that ultimate rotation control came in second. Yes, it did. Second. It was a close, close pull China between loves the two. It. China, China loves it, man. Loves China loves ultimate yeah. rotation control. And, and so does Brazil, Brazil and Australia. Do you, know, do you know why Brazil likes ultimate rotation control? Because it's a sexy app. 
And in Brazil, they like the sexy. So, well, Canadians theory. obviously need their privacy, so that's why they well, voted Apple. for my app. <laughs> uh, yes. So, and Mexico needs to look at ad network detector because. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so does. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess that's map. it. Right. The map is the always map is fun. Great. <laughs> uh, so, just a real quick recap: Scope thirty-four percent, Ultimate Rotation Control second at twenty-nine percent, App Lock third, uh, third place, twenty-one percent, and yeah. I my lookout ad network detector. It's just not you know. It's just as you say, Ron. It's not very sexy. Yeah, like, it's not the sexy app. You don't bring got the sexy really app to the interesting app. stuff to tell you. <laughs> and that's at sixteen percent. All right, I'm not looking back. I'm just looking forward here. In Brazil, we like the sexy app. It turns out that I lost, so that means I go first. Who has the sexy app of the week? Yeah. Yeah. Who's got it? Oh well, then I'm gonna have to change my the, app. I just changed the whole arena. It's yes. changing the game. <laughs> That is sexy app. Scary. <laughs> okay, I'm not. My my app is not sexy uh, in any way, but it's a nice app. It's called Lux Auto Brightness. There's no ultimate in there, I realize, but there is a free version as well as a paid version, two dollars and twenty nine cents. It's got it's got the letter X in it. That's sexy. I, I suppose so, Rob. <laughs> oh, we uh, clearly lost it. Sorry, Jason. <laughs> reel go. it in. Um, so Lux Auto Brightness attempts to give you ultimate control. See what I did there? Oh. Over, um, over your brightness <laughs> settings. And I've noticed, you know, I've run a lot of ROMs on different phones or whatever. And the automatic brightness settings, even on just manufacturer, you know, Samsung phones that mm-hmm. I get to review or whatever. If you put it on automatic, you never really know what you're going to get. A lot of times it's just. It, it's overdone and it's overblown and you know they take the low and make it too low and they take the high and they make it too high well uh lux auto brightness aims to give you full control over that so uh what you have here i mean this is just kind of the welcome screen it gives you a little tour because it's a little complicated when you when you first open the app and try and think about the controls that you have here so you can take the tour and it'll give you kind of a step-by-step description of what you have but if you start the settings with wizard well i can't talk wizard it gives you everything you know in a little bit more easy uh to use layout <laughs> right now i have it on periodic and essentially what periodic is, is it sets an inner I believe it's a five seconds that it samples from your lighting sensor uh, to see what the current Lux uh, brightness value is coming in over that. And based on that, it'll scale your brightness. There's also dynamic um, that I think that might be more rapid. On wake is any time you turn on your screen, it takes a sample of the light, the brightness. And then disabled, of course, is disabled. But so periodic, um, I can set any number of refresh values on here. I think I have it set to five, but you probably save your battery if you set it a little bit lower than, or a little bit longer than that to like 30. It just won't happen as quickly. Um, full bl- backlight when plugged in. Uh, I always like to have that when I'm charging my device. I like it to go for my screen to go full, full brightness. Uh, so you can do that with this app. Uh, show a persistent notification. I'm going to give away one of the later apps by doing this. I'm sorry, but um, no, I guess I'm not. Um, there it is down at the bottom. Backlight, 61%. Um, it just it just revised itself, made an update to 66%. So I always have that notification in my drawer if I want it. That's kind of nice. Fade brightness change. This is kind of cool because instead of just making a snap change or whatever. It's got a nice gradual curve that it changes between these uh, different settings. Uh, There's also a widget that I'll show you in a second, and it allows you to um, do a few things. If you click it, you can basically just tell it, do I want to adjust my brightness based on what the setting is now, or do I want to open the dashboard, whatever. And there you're done. And so it's all set up. Um, And so the widget is right there. Right now it's set on auto, and essentially what I've done is I you're... You are motivated or, or the, I think the first thing I thought of when I when I was using this app was I'm going to set a bunch of different profiles. I'm going to set my darkness profile. So when it's really dark, I want it to be, you know, this brightness or, you know, because it doesn't have to be as bright. Hey, there you go. Oh, like, that's wow. weird. That is weird. That is so I'm controlling the lights in the studio with my phone. Isn't that cool? Um, so you could you could basically set all of these different points uh, into the settings. There's this little link button right here. So if I wanted to say, yeah, so turn those lights even further off. Yeah, further <laughs> off. And I think, let's see here. What do we have here? I want it to refresh. Let's see here. Okay, so it's at one, one oh, uh, 10 lux, essentially. And so I could say at 10 lux, I want it to be this bright. 
and then I could hit this link button. I'll hold it down, apparently. And so basically what I've said is I've set kind of a point in my scale. At 10 lux, this is the percentage that it goes. If it was really bright in here, wow, thank you, Brian. This is great. Um, <laughs> I could, let's see here. So now that's updated, 932 lux. And I could say, when it's really bright, I want it to be as bright as possible. And I hold it down. So essentially, you're creating a scale uh, between points. You could get really granular with this and set a bunch of different points. But even they state the the um, the desire to set many, many points is only going to hinder performance. So it's probably best, in my, in my experience, is best to kind of set what you want it to be when it's really bright what you want it to be when it's moderately bright and what you want it to be when it's dark, or at the very least, really bright and really dark. And then it scales all the way in between that. And I think that the reason that I'm attracted to this is because, like I said, a lot of times the automatic uh, brightness scaling that they do is really just a couple of steps. You know, it's like either really dark or really bright. And this allows you to scale all the way through it based on the wide a, a arrangement of of lux settings, lux values. Anyways, um, it also has a few other things you get if you're if you're mm. a paid uh, app purchaser. You get things like um, astronomer mode, if that's important to cool. you. So when you're out, you know, looking at stars, you can set it on astronomer mode. If I hold it down, you get night mode, and I'm not really entirely sure how that's different from. Yeah, it it changes the the. Um, oh, thanks. <laughs> wow. I love that the lights in here just changed as I need them to. Uh, so let's see here. So there's astronomer mode. There's normal and there's night. I, I'm not really quite, I don't know if I understand night, but there it is. Um, anyways, and there's a bunch of other settings in here to protect you against jitter, as they call it. So hmm. if you have a low performing or a low quality light sensor, there are ways to um, set manual tweaks around it so that it's a little more accurate. And with the paid version, you can also... Use if you want to. I would imagine it's a hit to your battery, but you could use your camera to detect uh, <coughs> kind of that light as well in combination with the front to get more accurate. That's a little too geeky for my... Well, I don't know why you would ever want to do that. Hey, it's a really feature accurate. that was probably asked yeah. for, so someone has a use for it. But um, And it's just kind of a nice-looking app. It kind of runs in the background, and you don't even really know it's there once you have kind of have it set up. And if you really want to change it, you can use this widget to kind of you know, switch between things and, and launch the app. But um, it is called Lux Auto Brightness. If auto brightness is kind of something that you're struggling with, this might help you. Uh, free version does a lot. It's just kind of limited in a few things. You can check out their page to see what it's limited in. Uh, but the pro version is just 229. So uh, I like it a lot. Check it out. That's that. All right, Eileen, your turn. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome. I like gesture apps. I was trying to find the name of the app that I no longer use, unfortunately. But do you remember that app where I would just sort of like wave my hand over uh, the sensor here on the phone or on the tablet and then it would skip tracks? Um, I, that. I don't really use it anymore only because I've been switching phones all. You know, you know when you switch phones and you just forget about certain apps? You have the essentials. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. I was just looking for it because I know I own it because I paid for the paid version and I can't, I can't find the name of the app, but maybe somebody can uh, help me recall what that is. Um, today's app is a similar sort of gesture app. It is free in the Android App Store. It is called TipSkip. And essentially what it does, it works with Google Play. It works with Double Twist. I haven't tried it on any other um, uh, music application except for Amazon and RDO, and it doesn't work with those two apps. Essentially, <laughs> I know, it's very confusing. Like, what does it work with? It must work with, like, Songbird and Winamp. I don't have those. I just have Double, uh, double Twist, and I know for sure it works with Google Play. So, essentially, um, tip skip. Uh, let me launch it first. Um, you'll see it in your notification drawer as well. Um, all you do is, once you enable it, turn it on. If I can turn it on. Hello. <clears throat> tip skip. Turn, oh, there we go. It's on. And then it'll say in the app drawer that it's on. It's running in the background. <clears throat> and once you launch a uh, app, which has to be Google Play or Double Twist as far as I know. What's going on with my demo today? Um, <clears throat> and you play. You can see all my terrible music. Um, all you do is you kind of tip it, tap it in the back to double tap for the next song. You punched it. I know, I punched it. Uh, triple to go back. One, two, three. 
<laughs> and four, one, two, three, four, to pause. That's what it is. So imagine if you are, I love gesture apps. Imagine if you've got this and you've, and it also does it when the, the screen is black. You can do that while it's, it's playing. So what does one tap do? Well, I don't think I have that enabled. Uh -oh. Essentially, let me show you the different taps that you can have. So if I go into my settings, what's wrong with my hands today? You can have this, you can change the sensitivity control. So essentially, if I put it on the table and I go one, two, and I don't mean to, it's going to skip. <laughs> <laughs> so there are different actions here. You can have it two knock means to turn it off. Uh, I, the default is to have two knocks is next, three knocks is uh, the previous track, and then four knocks is uh, player pause. But um, you can change that around. You can have it uh, turn off or, or stop, you know, your music. I don't know. I found it kind of uh, cool. kind of interesting. I like things like this where people are trying gestures and they're trying to, to I know I, I really see hit it hard. Yeah. Uh, I like to see what they can come up with. I mean, I know I had the one where I kind of just uh, did the wave, but um, that that had some issues. Can you try too. it where it's just a tap, where you do a light tap? Because I know you were doing it hard so we could hear the name. Oh, but, yeah, okay. but, but what would the... I'm just curious. I mean, like, if All you were right. just like, boop, you know. All right, let's see. You gave boop. a little nudge, a little, little light. Little, 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 yeah, a little. Okay, hold on. Yeah. Pat. How, how pat? There you go. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah all right, cool. All okay, right, should cool. I put it on the table? Oh. Let's see if I do this. Oh, oh. see? That oh, was so yeah. fast. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no! That's cool. Take that quick. There, I turned it off. Ringo song, get it off. <laughs> Stop. So that's Chip Skip. It's free. Uh, it works on both your phones and tablets, and um, it's beta. So let them know it's from Busy Bites. Uh, if you get the, uh, let's see, if I, wait, wait, can I? Let's see. Hold on. Uh, Yay! That's okay. Cool. So if you um, get the app and you have suggestions, they want to know. They want uh, some information. I just, you know, I thought it was an interesting concept, and and I'm always looking for something yeah. different. It's the clapper. Yeah. It is the yeah. clapper. It's yeah, the it's clapper the cla yeah. of. Uh, yeah, I've got on 100 percent sensitivity right now. So if I just drop, no this, yeah, it's gonna be crazy. <laughs> but yeah, it is the clapper yeah. for uh, for music on your device. Clap your on the back to skip the track. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I like Very it. Cool. <laughs> like conk conk. All right. Anyway, tip skip free in the uh, Android marketplace. Free. All right. Nice. <laughs> cool. Well, Russell, you have an app. I actually have it installed. So why don't you go ahead and talk about it, and I'll try and keep up. I started installing this on on everything, uh, especially when when four point one started rolling out. It's a it's battery widget reborn, uh, and and basically it takes the the existing battery stats and just applies a lot more information. Um, you can have as you've got there just the regular widget on the screen that tells you what your battery percentage is, and when you open the application, it gives you uh, you know just uh, extended information. You can go to battery usage, and it'll tell you the temperature of the battery. Um, and just really break it down. Um, and this is just giving you a kind of basic battery information. But uh, it, it takes all go. this information. There you go. Um, it gives you a lot more information, specifically, you know, when you were having uh, the, the battery drop down. It applies a timestamp, which the existing battery setup for, uh, yeah. for, for Jelly Bean doesn't really do. Um, but it gives you a lot more information, gives you a lot more control, and it takes this information and embeds it in the uh, in the drawer uh, as well. So your notification drawer has got this information set up here, and it's oh, jelly yeah. bean. So you can actually two fingers oh, scroll so it up when you're not using that. it. I like that it's uh, called it, Reborn. Yeah, <laughs> and it gives you the the empty in ten hours and eighteen minutes. It, it gives you a lot of really quick glance information. It's just a, a lot of kind of. Just granular information that's not ordinarily available. This would have been great, Jason, when you're having the battery drain problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so does because this is running. Well, this is doing more uh, than obviously it would if it wasn't running. Does it? Does it ever hit the battery? Like, does it ever do the opposite thing and, and like? Uh, have a negative impact on the battery because it's monitoring this stuff all the time? Or is this kind of data being collected regardless? All of this is information that's already there. If you were to install something um, that, that would give you the access to the temperature controls and stuff like that, that's all information that the, the underlying system is already collecting. Right. 
Okay, so it's just laying it out in a in an easier way. And then, I mean, obviously, having it in the notification bar, that's really cool. It's lo- really great on phones, and on the Nexus 7, it looks really nice as well. Nice. I uh, The empty in 10 hours and 18 minutes. Uh, when I first installed this, and after like 20 minutes, it was like empty in one hour. And I had like half of my battery left. I was like, oh, wow, I hope that changes. <laughs> uh, thankfully, it did. This seems a little bit more realistic. Uh, I think it just needed time to kind of collect some of the data since I had installed it. No, this is really cool. And I love the uh, the Holo kind of... Uh, approach with it obviously now uh what version wh- what version and up is it only jelly bean or is it before jelly bean the it's- application runs i think on 2.3 and oh, higher yeah, but uh the the all the you know jelly bean yeah. optimization stuff obviously only works there right cool yeah. that's great that is Good battery one. widget reborn uh in beta right now uh they say on the play store entry uh, so check it out while it's free. It's probably, I would imagine, once it's out of beta, they'll have a, a paid-for mm. version of it. That you can get oh, as well. I think that's a sexy app. I downloaded it. I there you go. I'm totally going to download that Totally one. downloading quack, it. Quack, yeah. quack, 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 wow. It's, okay. got, it's got punctuation in the title. I know. Totally. I know. Battery sexy. widget. Reborn. Reborn. That's yeah. sexy. Brazil, Question they're going to love it. Yeah. Listen, Brazil, I'm on to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, my app, um, actually a little bit of an anecdote here. I saw Eileen on the way up to Petaluma about this. Um, uh, those of you who follow me on Twitter this past weekend, you might have saw that I that I ran a, uh, a, a, a running race. I ran a 5K on Sunday, the San Francisco Giants themed one, as I'm off to do about once a year. Try, I'm trying to do more. Um, but I do, I like to go running. I go outside running at least, you know, I try to go every, you know, as much as often as I can. Um, and one of my friends last week was, uh, twi- posted on Twitter at me saying, Hey, what running app do you use? And I sat there, I looked at the screen and I said, ironically, none. So I said, it was a good opportunity to put my money where my mouth was. I had a race coming up, co-host the show about a- a- Android and apps. So I said, let me see what's out there. And I settled on Runtastic. <laughs> which is um, not a unheard of app. It's what pretty well known. It's available on iOS. It is also available on Android. It's been around for a while. Um, and I downloaded the free, the free version to start just because I was kind of giving a sample. There is a pro version that is $3.99, which I thought was a little pricey. That's why I didn't take the jump. But after using it, now I see all the functionality that it does provide. It's going to be kind of hard to demo here because I'm not going to go running and nobody wants to see that really, let's be honest. Um, but I can show you the interface and then maybe, maybe we can show some of the video from the Google Play Store. But um, So when you open up the app, uh, basically you've got, a lot, you've got to create an account. Um, it does use Facebook, so if you're Facebook wary, be warned. There's, fa- there's Facebook Connect in there, but I think you can you can just set up an account with your email address, so you don't you don't have to use Facebook. Uh, um, <clears throat> but when you open up the app, this is on the main kind of screen, and it gives you the current kind of what you're doing right now. There's zero because nothing's happening. Um, but real simple that if you're gonna you tell it some information, how much you weigh, your height. Um, and then you tell it what you're doing. So for here, you can change the workout. You know, I've got a basic workout. Um, you can set a workout goal or have some sort of a, um, manual entry. I'm just going to leave it on basic workout. And you tell it what you're doing. And there's running. And you could change it to um, aerobics or badminton or basketball. There's a whole bunch of different kind of sports in here. So you can be specific about what you're exactly doing, whether the elliptical or cycling or that sort of thing. Um, I've only used it for running so far, so I'm going to leave it on running. And then once you press start workout, um, it just starts keeping track of – your duration. It keeps track of your distance. It uses the GPS to track you on a map. Um, it also keeps track of your pace and does all that kind of math. That's stuff that you don't um, that you don't want to do in your head. Um, for me, it was real simple that this little uh, music icon take pops me over to Google Music, so Google Play. So I was able to queue up my uh, my mix and uh, put on my 5K race mix and get it done, um, and then go back to the app so I can control music from there. Um, it does have. Um, it, when you launch it, it puts a little thing in the notification so you can get right to it. Um, it does have voice control. So every time I hit a mile, it would dim the music and then it would say, one mile, your current pace is blah, blah, blah. Um, so pretty neat in that regard in that it, it you know, really integrates with the speaker. Um, nice GPS integration to track what you're doing. Um, now over here, if we want to pop back to the demo thing, I can show you in the history. Um, so it keeps track of uh, the race. And this is the, this is the last run that I did on Sunday. Um, and I can see a whole bunch of data about it afterwards. Um, now, it was a 
it was a 5K, and I did do it in about 26 minutes, but I forgot to turn the app off because I was so winded. So it actually says the duration was 40 minutes because I was like, oh, I've got this app. Um, but what it does is it keeps track of how far you ran. Um, it tells you your average pace, your average speed, keeps track of the elevation. But then there's a whole bunch of other stuff. So you've got, you can split out a table of your pace um, by mile. So it says here my best mile was mile number two where I was running a 7.59 mile. Um, it can graph out a bunch of time so you can, so you can map out your pace versus, you know, and your speed and factor in the elevation or your heart rate if you're doing that. Um, so it's got nice, you know, pretty cool integration. It keeps track of a map so you can see that's the route I ran along the Embarcadero in San Francisco. Um, and it's just a bunch of neat little functionality right out of the box that's totally free. So now the question is, is that is it worth it to go pro? Is it worth it for the 399 that does unlock a bunch of stuff. Um, so if we go up here, you can see all the things. Um, it can keep the voice feedback, giving you like a coach, somebody egging you on, keeping you go the whole time. For me, f on the free version, that stopped after two miles. Um, I'm not sure how much of a fan I am of that. But um, you can track your races live, so you can live stream your race so people can follow along on Facebook or on the web. Um, it can track your heart rate, heart rate zones. It can do geotagging. And then it's got this um, Google Earth view that where you can you can that we were seeing there in the video just now where you can track your race on Google Earth, which is pretty cool. Um, so it was a neat, you know, like as someone who runs but never uses apps to track my races or track my runs, it was pretty cool to play with. And I think I'm going to keep using it uh, um, just to kind of build up some data and see how it goes. I might actually go up to the pro version. So sweet. How yeah. much is the pro version again? Three ninety nine. Okay. But you get a lot of functionality for three ninety nine. So. So there you go. Awesome. Runtastic. Yeah. No zombies chasing you in Runtastic, right? No zombies chasing you. Yeah, there's no that should be a feature. Mode. Yeah. Right? They, That's yeah. probably working on that. Yeah. They, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, four excellent apps this week. I think this was a great arena. Uh, Lux Auto Brightness, Tip Skip, Battery Widget, Reborn, and Runtastic. <laughs> You well, have you know, to say they, it that way. They, yeah. You do. Battery they put Widget in the, Reborn. Reborn. It's they, the best name ever. <laughs> yes. You can vote for your favorite app this week by going to bit.ly slash AAA poll 77. Bit.ly slash AAA poll 77. And let us know which is your favorite app this week. I'm going to make an early prediction that Battery Widget, Widget Reborn. Did I gonna, not tell you win. that it was sexy? Yeah, I knew yeah. it sexy. already. I know it's, it's sexy when app, I download it during the show. That I'm is actually the sexy playing app. I'm installing with it, right it right now. now. I'm literally installing it. And I'm always really happy when I see an app come out that actually utilizes the jelly bean notification yeah. thing. And th that does it really yes. well as well. Oh, yes. That's that what I love about it the most. A random complaint about the Google Play Store is that when I love to install apps from the Google Play Store on the web, yeah. mm -hmm. and you do the drop down, it shows you what devices. And now, admittedly, I'm lucky I've got multiple devices. Right. But like, I wanted to install this on all my devices, but you've got to do uh, it individually. Individually. One Oh, so interesting. I'm installing it on my phone and on my Nexus 7. So thank you, Russell. Boom. I, I owe you a debt of thanks to help me track my battery performance. Okay. Yeah, and it's uh, it's doing well. 62% of the votes right now, but you never know. There's plenty of time. Uh, this could change at any moment. All, what is that? I just found an app. And the, the recommended app when I installed Battery Widget Reborn was an app called Is It August? And the description is, ever been stuck wondering whether or not it's August and unable to work it out? <laughs> Huh. In the past, one would have had to go to isitaugust.com. But for Dude. those on the grow without an internet connection, like, it's very difficult. But not to worry. With this app, you can check. Like 5,000 installs. And heck? it just says yes What's or no. What's so important about August? Why? Hmm. What kills me is the install. It's got 5,000 installs. And it came out in March 2001. Damn, that's my next arena. And I blew it. There it is. Is it August? Look at the screenshot. <laughs> No. no. <laughs> well, it's not a very good app if it actually was August it was when they took the screenshot. By people. <laughs> Interesting. The battery. Remarkable reviews. Remarkably, Remarkably <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> Excellent. Best thing that's ever happened to me, says, says Stephen. These are recent, too, and they're in August. The world has been waiting for this. Somebody with a Galaxy S3. Remarkably brilliant. All right. well, one five uh, you know what? This is the best. we got to read all these reviews. Oh, whoops. Oh, Revolutionary. Like Nelson <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Nelson Mandela weighing in on it as well. Oh, uh, I mean, it's gosh. an important app. We, a, we don't want to underscore. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I felt as if that was breaking news. I felt <laughs> as if really it was an August app was breaking. So. <laughs> Excellent. All right. <laughs> Phew, this just in, it is not it August. It is not August anymore.
No. <laughs> I, love, I love I love this this. Con- Ron, this, you have to download it now review. that you've talked about it. You this oh, review this from guy. Henry on July thirty first, twenty twelve said, "I often find myself confused regarding whether it's August or not with this app. No longer." <laughs> yeah, you really should have held on to that for an arena. That was a guaranteed win. That's great. Dang that's great. It. You gotta, you gotta keep those yeah. bottles up the next time. It's here's the sexiest a, app ever. Here's an opposite side of the spectrum. Onkit says, WTF, it just shows a big no on the screen and nothing else. <laughs> What's so special about this? <laughs> I, I love Dang, it. didn't get I it. Love it. All right, sorry. All right. Uh, well, next week we have a pretty, pretty great uh, guest as well. Aaron Newcomb oh, nice. uh, joins us again. He actually has the Vizio co star, so he's Ooh. going to uh, bring it in. We'll awesome. hook it up. Do a little review of that. I'm very curious to see. Cause I'll be here. Yes. Are you going to be here? Thank God. Yes. Okay, yeah, good. No, I will be here. Right. Okay. Uh, so that's next week's awesome guest. But I have to thank you, Russell Holly. this week's awesome guest. Yeah, Russell, yeah. you're awesome. Yeah, really appreciate you joining us today. It was Thanks awesome. Thanks for having me. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, you bet. We'll definitely um, extend the invite your way again. And if you are, are able, we'd love to have you back. Um, your mobile editor at geek.com. Uh, this is your chance to kind of plug and promote whatever you would like. So go for it. Um, I'm pretty much always online social networks um, at Russell Holly on Twitter, um, and uh, I really am just uh, just a, a mobile writer. I, I just you know anytime there's uh, there's some fun stuff going on, you know I'll uh, I'll be talking about it. Cool, yeah, and you're very active on Google Plus as well. I'm always really impressed by the amount of Android kind of conversation that happens in Google Plus. It's like one of my absolute go-to places to kind of be oh, yeah. in a conversa- direct conversation with so many people that are just so intrinsically kind of involved in, in the Android community. It's great. It's definitely a passionate group. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks again, Russell. We really appreciate having you on. Uh, Ron, your turn. Plug away. Just go to about.me slash ronxo, and you can find all links to my Twitter and Facebook and Google Plus and all the fun stuff, as well as links to my day job over at graphically and ifanboy.com, and where you can argue over what your favorite comic book character is when you get tired of arguing over what your favorite porn is. <laughs> you can be a fanboy over there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 it's fine. That makes sense. More traffic for me. I don't all know. Right. <laughs> all right. And Eileen? <laughs> uh, you can find me on uh, about.me slash Eileen Rose or on Twitter at... Eileen TV. These are the best reviews ever of Is It August? This is, it's a gold mine. I'm just really curious if the developers created the other t- 11 apps that That's are That's a required. very good point. Yeah. Is there, I uh, want to know if it's wait, December, okay? Yes. See? Joel we Anderson. We should get him on the show. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Jason Howell, or uh, you can go to about.me slash Jason Howell and find all the uh, different places that I'm at. But that is it for this week, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, leave us a voicemail if you have a chance. Chance. We are at 347 Show AAA. You can always send us an email or uh, you know a video link as part of the email at AAA at twit.tv. Uh, hit the show up on Twitter at Android Show. Show notes can be found at twit.tv slash AAA as well as past episodes on our site, uh, iTunes, YouTube. And finally, catch us live every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific at live.twit.tv. Thanks so much for joining us this week. We'll see you next week on another episode of All About Android. Thank mm-hmm. you.